We are out here still on our crossing of the Great Bahama Bank. We're about three hours into an eight hour passage. Insanely glassy conditions, almost no swell. Janie's out here, what are you doing? Sewing patch screens and playing with needles. I made French toast and bacon with cold brew for our New Year's Eve breakfast. Oh, yeah. Space, fill my lungs, fill the silence, still becoming our fate. Save your plans, please don't tell me who I am. I'm experimenting with sail trim. I'm still trying to, to learn the, the finesse of perfecting sail trim and getting the most out of our speed. I know that's usually thought of to be for racers, but I mean, cruising, when you've got an eight hour passage, good sail trim can shave off an hour. So I'm trying to learn all the ins and outs. And so we're sailing really close to the wind. We're, we're probably right around 45 degrees to the wind. Our head sail wasn't liking it. It was getting a little bit luffy, so I rolled that in. One thing I don't like about Cloud is that our Genoa tracks don't go very far forward. And so I, I think if I could have slid the jib car further forward, I maybe could have closed that slot a little bit and kept it flying. I'm not sure if that would have worked but I am able to keep the main out, which I feel like is, I think it's given us an extra half a knot. Yeah, and the, our adjustments are working. It's fun just making all these little tweaks and kind of putting into practice. I'll go down below and read a little bit and try and put it into practice. And so right now with light airs, I'm learning that it's better to have a fuller sail shape, a little bit more twist in the main. And maybe even when it's really light, I'm sheeting the traveler over to windward, even, even windward of the center line. And so I've got the traveler maybe six inches to windward from the center line of the boat, and I've eased the main sheet to give it a little bit of a fuller shape. And I, I think that's on point for these light winds. And we would love people who are great with sail trim to let us know in the comments what you do in light air or heavy air, any, any tips and tricks you've learned of how to remember certain, um, certain formulas to perfecting sail trim. This is one thing that's been so fun for me about sailing is, is just learning and perfecting it. It's so cool trying to like master a new craft, especially one that's so functional. Fish on! What did we get? Yeah. It's a cuda! It's a small cuda. Teeth. <laughs> All right, bye. The wind is gone. We dropped the main and are motoring into the Barry Islands, into Great Harbor Key. We're gonna anchor outside of Bullock's Harbor and it is like a swimming pool out here. We're in a little over 40 feet. You can see the bottom clear as day. Land ho! Land ho. Gosh. Shark, look. Right there, on the bottom. Oh my gosh. There's a little nurse shark just chilling. Those two. You can go further that way 
if you are a rookie to see if you get it. <laughs> but I am a rookie. That's it. And then you pull. And then, what? Look how easy that was, dude. <laughs> that was. Hey, hey. That was that was insane. I spent like half an hour trying to get the damn thing out. You just did that in two seconds. So you do clean it. You cut. There's some parts you cut off. What do you want to keep? This, 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 that's the part you fish with. All right. So this is what they look like when they're done, huh? Yeah. Dang. Gorgeous. Okay. Thank you for showing us. to record that. Do you just feel like the biggest kook now? Kind of. <laughs> no stains on his hands. Last sunset of 2021. Another beautiful day where we are able to sail and not put the motor on. We are, uh, we've got the wind right off our starboard quarter and Cloud really likes sailing under Genoa alone. And we also really like sailing under Genoa alone. So we've got just the, uh, the head sail up and doing about five knots. We're not sailing, we are at anchor. Someone explain this to me. I chose this anchorage in this little bay here because the wind is south-southeast and it's been south-southeast for several days. Because of that, I didn't even look at the swell, but when you do, the swell is from the northeast. So while we're protected from the south winds, as I expected, we are not protected from this random northeast, east-northeast swell, which has us rolling a lot. And look, even zooming out the entire Atlantic Basin, it's nothing but south winds. Where is the swell coming from? I don't understand. We weren't the only ones who thought this anchorage would be a good idea. We are heading out on a little dinghy adventure into Shark Creek. Shark Creek. It's called Shark Creek because of its shark infested waters. In just the last year, 70 people have been mauled to death by sharks in this creek. I'm lying, that's not true. You are supposed to be able to see some sharks in here though. Sharks and rays and lots of turtles too. Lots of wildlife. This is gonna be a slow boat ride through the mangroves and uh, it should be really pretty. We're not going at high tide. Um, tide's going out right now, so we'll just see how far we can get. Our dinghy's pretty small. Either way, it's gonna be super fun. All right, let's check out Shark Creek. Let's do it. amazing adventure took a turn and our outboard stopped working so right now we're pulling it back I don't know if you can see towards our anchorage um, it's a nice stroll and we're lucky that this didn't happen in the mangroves having a great start to our adventure and the outboard 
cut out and would not restart. We were putting away some camera gear and switching places. I had been steering and when Chris tried to cut it back on, nothing was happening. We checked the fuel. We think the issue might be a spark plug, but we do not have those tools on the dinghy. So that's lesson number one. Uh, we actually <laughs> ended up paddling maybe half a mile, maybe longer up the beach. Cloud is a ways out there. Chris is walking down the shore to a house that has a skiff out front or something with an outboard and we're hoping we can maybe get a tow back to Cloud and diagnose the issue because we really want to continue with this adventure. I guess this is its own adventure. Chris is pretty bummed. I'm just tired. We got our workout and it's a gorgeous place to be stuck. So we'll just see what happens. Chris is being so emo right now. We do have someone coming. Someone I think is gonna tow us on a jet ski, which is super ironic because a, what, a week ago, we actually went out for a dinghy adventure in Miami and ended up having to tow a broken down jet ski. This is the most ironic kind of event. <laughs> We're about to get towed by a jet ski. Well, they're coming right now. All this works. I pulled out the um, the plugs that were in there. They're pretty fouled up. I got a couple new ones. Uh, I'm gonna clean this out a little bit, put these in, and hope that's the issue. Failed adventure update. Well, we got towed in from um, the ladies on the jet ski, which is really funny because a week ago we ended up towing a broken down jet ski just in Miami, but it worked out very smoothly. We got back to the boat. Chris was on the dinghy. He gassed everything up and replaced the spark plugs, two of which they, they were fouled up. They looked pretty gross. So I that, thought for sure that was going to do it. Yeah, it's good that that happened, uh, but the motor, it was... It was kind of turning, but not it still starting. Wouldn't start. It was not starting. It was not the plugs. Maybe so, that was partially to blame. We have a great outboard manual, and um, I was on my phone researching, and it suddenly occurred that it might be flooded, <laughs> which is actually a really straightforward fix. So. I go overkill on the priming ball sometimes when I bought the motor. The guy told me, like, yeah, every time you start it, just give it a few pumps on the priming ball. And since we were stopping and starting so much in Shark Creek, I was priming it a lot. And um, from Janie's research on, I think it was the boat galley. Thank you, the boat galley. Yes, boat galley. Um, it said it could be flooded. And that was sort of, that, that made sense to me. Cause I just, you know, it, it immediately in my head, I just had images of me pumping that prime ball. And so it said to, um, if that's the case to help clear it, close the choke. I had the choke open at the time, close the choke and start it with a with a little bit of throttle. A little bit of throttle. And I did that and it sounded better. Did it again, sounded even better. Did it again and it kicked on and it coughed up some junk, which I felt terrible about. Didn't know what to expect, but it did cough a little bit of fuel out um, into the water, which really sucks. So if you're trying this, keep that in mind. If you can start it, I don't know how to avoid that, to be honest. If you have the option to start it in a bucket of water or on land or something, do that, but we don't have that option. So it, it did cough a little bit of junk out and then kicked right on and started running great. So the engine was flooded. Now we still have some daylight left. We're gonna jump back in the dinghy, rip back across and hope we can reclaim this day. And if we break down again, uh, we'll call our Miami girls to come pick us up in the jet ski again.
got some wind today. We've got a one reef in the main and the head sail's pretty reef down. We're doing six knots, heading to Hoffman Island. 